Rodney Nigel Mayfield. Straight butter dating and relationship talk. Now that's straight butter. Welcome to Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk. I'm Rodney Nigel Mayfield. We got a hot and informative show for you today. Today's show topic is Moments of Meditation, a 31-day turnaround. Let's do it. Welcome back to the show. Before I get started, I'd like to ask everyone that watches this video to subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so, and click the notification bell and the drop down menu that says all so that every time I upload new video content, you'll be notified. Also, like, share, and please leave a comment. Again, the show topic is Moments of Meditation, a 31 day turnaround. All right. We got a special video guest in the house on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Introduce yourself to my audience and tell them where you're from and tell them about your ministry. All right. Well, my name is Dr. Myron K. Jamison. I'm originally from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, I love God. I love people. Hey, and I just I'm ready and excited that you would have me to be a guest on your show today. Hey, my brother, listen, we've been trying to get this thing together for quite some time, for months, in fact. Uh, and uh, there was a cancellation here and there, but you know what? God's plan always works best. So let's welcome Arthur, Moments of Meditation, the 31-day turnaround, Dr. Pastor Myron Jameson to the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. All right, welcome to the show, brother. Welcome to the show. All right, uh, uh, again, man, I'm glad to have you on the show, and uh, I know that this is going to be uh, a show and an interview pertaining to your book that's going to bless a lot of people. Thank you. All right? So, all right, Pastor, let's chop it up. Okay. Your book, Moments of Meditation, A 31-Day Turnaround. What or who inspired you to write this book? The Holy Spirit inspired me to write the book. God gave it to me about two years ago, and because of procrastination, I didn't do it. And finally, um, last year, when I put my mind to it, I said, you know, do this book and do it now, which goes to show when we put our mind to anything, we can do anything that we want to do. And I had the book written um, in less than about 30 days, 30 to 40 days. I had the book written. Wow. Wow. That was definitely some inspiration, man. Uh, well, I guess the next question I was going to ask you <laughs> well, is uh, how long did it take? But you said 30 days. So you procrastinated for a couple of years. And then when you finally put pen to paper using biblical scripture, it only took you 30 days. 30 days. Yes, sir. All right. Well, folks, I'll tell you this. I've read the book and you can be the slowest reader and you could read this book in 15, uh, not the book, not the entire book, but each chapter between 10 to 15 minutes, uh, perhaps 20 minutes, you know, but uh, it's a great book. It's a great read. And I definitely recommend uh, this book. Now, uh, Pastor, is this the first book that you've ever authored? Yep, it's my first book. And I'm telling you, like I said, you, God is so good. I've sold um, about 700 copies of this book on my own. All right. All right. Awesome. Well, you know what? Uh, I have a lot of books from Christian authors that I have read in the past. Uh, some I wouldn't recommend. Uh, but in order for you to know uh, if you will recommend a book, you have to read it. Uh, yeah. Some things are a little bit fleshly than I, I'd like. But, you know, when you write a book, especially when you're promoting God's word, you have to include biblical scripture to justify uh, what you're writing in the book. Uh, yeah. So why did you write a book on meditation and why the 31 day chapter format? Well, I'm not a big reader myself. And I was going to do a 365 day, 
But how many times do we really commit to something that's 365 days? But I can commit to 30 days or 31 days, but 365 days is a lot. So I wanted something short, sweet, to the point that would catch a person's attention, make them think and change them just like that. Well, you know what? I, I absolutely agree with you. Most people do not read, and I'm not going to use the analogy that you probably have heard before, that if you put it in the book, they won't read it. If you yeah. put it in a long book uh, that's 365 days, I can assure you they definitely won't read it. Uh, and so uh, having, having that mindset of making it short and concise, 31 days, uh, 10 to 15 minute read uh, per day, uh, per chapter, uh, I think that was a uh, 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 ingenious idea. Now, yeah. while reading your book, man, uh, I noticed in the dedication section as well as the acknowledgement pages, you gave honor to whom honor is due to people yeah. such as your mom, your dad, your wife, pastors who influenced you in the ministry, and even Pastor Shirley Caesar, world renowned yeah. gospel singer, uh, who was an inspiration to you. And yeah. I would be remiss. If I uh, didn't mention your children, who uh, you also mentioned in the acknowledgement page as well. Yes. So uh, why were all of these people inspirations to you? Every person came in my life just about in different times. My wife, you know, my children, uh, my mentors, they came in my life when I really needed a man in my life because my father was in the house, but he wasn't in the house. So I had to learn everything I learned from my mother just about. And so when I got grown and on my own, you know, I went out there and I was just in the world because I didn't know what it took to be a real man because I had never had that example. So three men came into my life, well, several of them, but they really showed me and helped me grow to be the man that I am today. They showed me what a real man was and how a real man should take care of his family. Man, you know what? That's, that's awesome. And actually, uh, I just did a video two videos ago pertaining to uh, fathers being absent in the home and as I explained in that particular video uh, that I was raised by a single mother I knew my mom I knew my father uh, he came around a couple times a week but my mom gets all the credit yes. and now the intentions for God is for a man and a woman in marriage raise their children together that's the best format. God has the best plan, but we know it doesn't always work that way. And I've turned out pretty decent. <laughs> I've turned out pretty decent for only a mother to raise me. You know, I've never been in trouble with the law. Uh, I did 26 years uh, in the military. Uh, I, I'm pretty stable. I've been in my house for 24 years. I have the same car I've had for 20 years, plus I have another car. So the thing is, my mom raised us in the church and the greatest thing that she could have ever done for me is to introduce me to the Lord Jesus Christ and you know we, when we get outside the house especially when you go to the military you go astray yeah we go yeah. astray now uh pastor were you uh, a vet uh, were you in the military 22 years eight months and two days all right well brother uh thank you for your service we didn't serve in the same uh, military branch, but we serve the same purpose. And yes. I'd like to thank you for your service. And thank you for your service too, sir. Thank you. Well, Pastor, uh, I'm a stickler for sticking to the principles and the precepts that God has already sealed in his word okay. as it relates to writing a book or speaking as a representative of God. Now, were you mindful of the premise of uh, when you penned your book and uh, to strictly adhere to what thus said the Lord according to biblical scripture? Yes, because when God called me into ministry, I had never been a pastor, a minister, or any deacon or anything. I was just a servant, whatever my pastor needed me to do. So when God called me, long story short is, I said, God, I've never preached before. He said, you say exactly what I tell you to say. Don't add to it and don't take away from it. And even being a pastor in the city that I was in, um, Rodney, um, he said, many have come to this city before you, but I could not use them in this city. And as long as you don't conform to the city, I will use you mightily in the city. And that's exactly what God did in New York before us. Wow. Now, what part of New York were you in? We were up at Fort Drum, Watertown, Syracuse area. 
Okay, okay. Yes, uh, listen, uh, I can hear the word of God in that message that he told you because the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we see so much, uh, so many people conforming to this world system, man. It's really sad. It's really, really ridiculous. Um, uh, Pastor Myron, uh, tell us about your book, Moments of Meditation, the 31 Day Turnaround. Well, it's, uh, in, in, in a nutshell, tell, tell us about uh, what your intentions are uh, with this book when uh, people read it, whether they be Christians or non-Christians, because uh, this book can also bless people who are not saved and also convict them to get saved yes, in sir. the Lord. Yes, sir. Because it's an easy book to read, like you said, whether you're the deepest Christian or someone just giving your life to Christ. It's simple, easy. It's had 31 days. It makes it take you two or three minutes to read it. I'll give you an example of some of the days. Like one of the days is the first day is, are you a winner or a whiner? And then, you yes. know, day eight, in spite of, Lord, you deserve my praise. You know, day 15, your thinking is too small. And I'll stay right there. Your thinking is too small. God told me that, Rodney. He said, your thinking is too small. He said, close your eyes and think of something big. I did it. He said, open them. He said, it's too small. He said, close them again. I closed them again. He said, think of something even bigger. I did that. Open them. He said, it's still too small. I said, he said, think of something bigger than that. I thought of something bigger than that. And when I opened my eyes, the Holy Spirit said to me, you are still thinking too small. And that applies to a lot of us because our thinking determines our destiny. And a lot of us are thinking just too small. You know what? Uh, I concur with you on that as well, man. Uh, Pastor Myron, uh, what is meditation as it relates to the Christian Bible? And share with my audience a couple of Bible scriptures on meditation. One of my scriptures is um, in Joshua chapter one, where it talks about meditate on the word of God both day and night. And meditation to me is just when you can just get away with God and just begin to um, allow the Holy Spirit to minister to you. Or meditation could be just getting a scripture in your heart and the whole day just meditating on that scripture. It's kind of like a, a soup when you put everything in that soup and you allow that soup to marinate, you know, a simmer. And that's what meditation is to me, just allowing the word of God to simmer in your heart. Yeah. Well, yes, uh, a lot of uh, people, when they hear the word meditation, uh, usually associated with the Eastern culture, uh, in, in the Asian culture, they do a lot of meditation, but they don't meditate to the true living God, Jehovah, who only begotten son is Jesus Christ, who gives the Holy Spirit to those who uh, repent, confess, believe and receive Christ, what he did on the cross. Yes. So we're not talking about that meditation. We're talking about meditation that the true living God, Jehovah, said that he wants believers to do to draw closer to him. Because God said, if you draw nigh near to me, I will draw near to you. And meditation is something that we can do as Christians uh, that we usually don't do uh, to draw close to God. Yeah. Yeah, correct, Pastor? Yeah, and spending that time with God. And, you know, I had a meeting with the men the other day and I was asking them, how much time do you spend with God? And some of them were saying, oh, I just got too much going on in my plate and different things. And mm. so I stopped them and I said, really, that's an excuse because all of us have 24 hours in a day. You mean to tell me you can't take five to 10 minutes out of 24 hours to spend it with the Lord? Whether it's your lunch break, I, and I asked one guy, I said, what time do you get up? He said, 5.30. I said, well, get up at 5. That gives you 30 minutes right there to spend time with the Lord meditating on his word. Exactly. You know, God wants our best. Yes. He wants our first. He don't want to be the last. And as you know, Pastor, as well as I and other Christians, that when we put God off for last and we get into bed and start reading our scriptures, what we do? We fall asleep. Yeah. We fall asleep. Now, when we wake up in the morning, we already know, especially if we have a job to go to, we got to go to that job and be on time, right? Yes. And so we make it our business to be on time. But since most Christians, uh, uh, all Christians, we've never seen God, then we feel like that we can just give God whatever time that we have uh, left, left over. Left over time. God, God is not a leftover God. Sir. You know, he wants our best and we should give him our best and i have not always given my best i'm quite sure you have not always given your best but that's my mindset every day lord let me read your word first because when i read his word first in the morning when i get up 
Yeah. Even though I'm not in the military anymore and I don't have to get up at a certain time like we used to. But, you know, when I get up, I said, well, God, why did you wake me up at 430 in the morning? Why did you allow me to wake up? Mm -hmm. That's to pray for somebody who's in need. Somebody's yeah. going through some stuff at 430 in the morning that needs you to intercede on their behalf. And so yeah. I take it like that. And that's what makes me feel good after I read the word. Man, my mind is clear because I said, Lord, I've spent time with you and I'm going to spend some more time with you throughout the day because I'm going to meditate on your word day and night, even while I am at work. And so, yeah. uh, Pastor, why does it seem, why does the word meditation seem so mysterious to uh, most Christians? Uh, because we know most Christians never practice meditating on the word of God day and night, uh, as the scriptures dictate uh, believers to do, according to Joshua 1 and 8. So uh, why does that seem so mysterious? And uh, many Christians just don't uh, practice uh, what God told them to do. I think one of the reasons why right is because it's not taught. See, a lot of things we're taught, um, and I hope I don't offend anyone. You know, when you go to church, they hear the, and, uh, yeah, they hear all the hooping and hollering, and it, uh, it gets the flesh roused up and excited, but it doesn't yeah. do anything for the spirit. And see, our yeah. spirit man wants to be fed, our spirit, but our flesh wants to hear a lot of hooping and hollering and jumping and shouting and running around and different things. And again, there's nothing wrong with that if the word of God is being taught with that. But if the Correct. word of God is not being taught with that, then that, that's why people, when they hear the word meditate, they oh, it's a spooky word. And it's not a spooky word. Not at all. Well, there's nothing spooky in the word of God. Uh, <laughs> even the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost yes, is sir. not spooky, you know. Uh, but people like to associate uh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost or meditation with something that's uh, out of the norm. Well, it is out of the norm because God is not the norm. He's yep. supernatural. Yes. And so, uh, again, Christians, God is speaking to you. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing in your mind. So if we concentrate on studying the word of God to show ourselves approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, then we uh, will never be concerned with what the world says because when we study the word of God enough, when we hear things that the world says, we can automatically discount it. Just like the Secret Service studies real money, yes. thousands and thousands of uh, yeah. uh, man hours yeah. a year. And why do they study real money? Why don't they study the, the, the fake money? They study the real money so that when they come across the fake, they recognize it instantaneously they don't be like uh mm, i don't i don't know if that's real money or fake money and so christians we're gonna have to study the word of god so that we're not misled yes. by people who are trying to deceive us intentionally and mm -hmm. also by people who may not be trying to uh deceive us intentionally uh, but they deceive you anyway because you don't study the word of god yeah, and that's why even on Sundays, I encourage all of our um, the people in the congregation, bring your Bible, bring your pen, your notepad. So when I give you well, the word that God has given unto me to give unto us, you take it home and you study it for yourself because you will want to make sure that what I'm teaching is lining up with the word of God. And I'm not just teaching you something that I conjured up that morning and ran up in the pulpit to preach. Well, and that, that brings me to Acts 17. Mm -hmm. uh, the people of Berea, uh, after Apostle Paul now, we're talking about a true apostle, not a fake apostle, but Apostle Paul teaching the word of God. They said, well, let me go and flip through the scriptures and see back then they didn't have chapters and verses, folks. That means these people had to do some due diligence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That that could take a long time when you don't have chapter and verse. And once they... Uh, compared what Paul was saying. So apparently they took notes as well, mm -hmm. you know, because human beings, we, we can't remember everything that's preached in a sermon verbatim. Yeah. So they took notes and taking notes is good. Just like uh, Pastor Byron said, because you can go and you can check those notes that the pastor said mm -hmm. uh, against the scripture. And, mm -hmm. and listen, in my opinion, it's not a bad thing to wait until you get home to say amen if you don't understand what the pastor is saying now you know because like i said a pastor could tell you uh, something that's uh contrary to scripture such as uh let's just pull some uh that i've evolved on 
jokes. Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Hold on. Hey, did I, uh, uh, huh? Oh, Go ahead. Ahead. When, when Job said, the Lord give it, the Lord take it away, blessed be the name of the Lord. It was, it yeah. was truly stated, but it wasn't a statement of truth. Yeah, exactly. Job, exactly. Job said it, but God does not give and take away. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, the, point, the point I was going to make, if a pastor say, well, I've evolved on homosexuality and I'm evolving. Well, God don't change. In Hebrews 13 and 8, the scripture says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So God does not go contrary to his word. And so uh, if you amen that at that particular time, then you're basically saying, I'm in agreement with what you're saying, Pastor. Instead of you writing these notes down and saying, let me go the scripture and see if God changes, if God has ever evolved. And so that's my point that I wanted to make. Okay. So, Pastor... Uh, what is the Holy Bible definition or explanation on meditation? It's just what we just said. You know, the Bible says what we said in Joshua, meditate on the word of God both day and night. Um, and that's the, the Bible's version of it to me is when we can just get the word of God and go. Psalm 91 says he that dwelleth in that secret place. So get the word of God, go into that secret place and just begin to Read the word of God and allow the and ask before you even start. Holy Spirit, I need you now. Open my eyes, open my ears that I can hear your voice. Open my eyes that as I begin to study your word, you'll reveal your word unto me. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, uh, explain to my audience why meditating on the word of uh, God day and night is so advantageous to their spiritual walk in the Lord. Meditation upon the word of God is, is so um, important because you can get the word. The Bible says, thy word I have hidden in my heart. You get that word down in your heart so that when the enemy comes up against you, like Jesus, when he came up against Jesus, Jesus said, it is written. Why? Because he had the word in his heart. But if the what's in you will eventually come out of you, if curse words are in you, I cut you <laughs> off in traffic, you're going to cuss me out. But if the word of God is down on the inside of you, when a doctor come in and they say you have stage four cancer because you've been studying the word of God, you can say, no, I don't receive that because Jesus um, bore my sickness. And with the stripes of him, I am healed. Yeah, uh, that's that's uh, a powerful powerful statement man uh we have to hold firm uh to the word of god now ultimate healing we know is when we go to heaven there's no more sicknesses there's no more tears no more pain uh but we should always believe that god can manifest his word in the natural and if for some reason it don't that means it's your time to depart and go to heaven where there is no more sicknesses there is no more pain uh because we we all are going to depart from this earth unless Christ return first in our lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die after this, yeah. the judgment. Yeah. Um, but either way, it goes, the, let me, either way it go goes, if God heals me on this side or I'm healed over there, I'm healed. And that's why in a person you're talking about changing your mindset has to get that in their mindset. You know, God, whether you heal me here or you take me home, I'm still healed. And when you begin to Bottom say line. that, the devil can't play with you because you've spoken that word out of your mouth versus, you know, well, they said I have six months and I'm going to die. It ain't over till God says it's over, Ronnie. That, that's right. That's right. That's right. The devil loves to uh, take, the, take your thoughts. Yeah. And use them against you, especially when we hear uh, detrimental information, mm -hmm. uh, detrimental things that the doctor says, well, there's no cure. That's when you have to really get in your prayer closet. Have, you have to really study those meditation scriptures and, and apply them, make them applicable to your life now, because now you're in a battle. Mm -hmm. You're in, a, in the test of your life and you're going to have to. Uh, stand on those scriptures and believe God to do what he said. And like Pastor Myron said, whether you're healed on this side of heaven or whether you go to heaven, you are healed. Yeah. All right. Uh, how will the body of Christ be blessed by reading uh, and meditating on the scriptures outlined in your book? Because at each, in each chapter, there are three scriptures in there. And you can take those three scriptures um, and be, write them down. 
take them to work or wherever you go during the whole day and you just begin to allow those three scriptures to get into your heart. And that's meditation right there where you can just begin because as you begin to speak those three scriptures out, the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal more and more to you. And the Holy Spirit may say, now I want you to go to this scripture. Now I want you to go to this scripture. And all of it's line up on line, precept on precept. It's just lining up with the word of God. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Hey, Pastor, uh, pick your favorite chapter in the book or just thumb through and let the Holy Spirit give you which chapter and go to the final page okay. and take those meditation scriptures and exegete those meditation scriptures. And folks who uh, don't study the word of God, exegeting means to uh, explain what those scriptures mean. Uh, line by line, precept by precept. And so, Pastor, uh, which chapter did you select? Um, I'm going to go to let's look there at this. past, present, and future. Past, present, past, and future. future. Yeah. Okay. Past, present, and then the, the scripture that I want to use is Romans 8 and 28. It's one of my favorite scriptures. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. That's one of my okay. favorite scriptures because um, God takes the good, he takes the bad in our life, and he takes the ugly, and he mixes it all together. And it's for our good um, or our growth, others gain, and then God gets the glory out of it. Real fast, I give this example, right? Because when I was in the military, um, I went to jail for 60 days. And so I had to ask God, I said, God, you know what's going on. And God, God said, it's part of your process. I didn't understand it then. See, we all got to go through our process in life. And so I had to go in there and do that. And when I came out, I would end up wanting to the jail and preaching, right? Because I was a pastor, still a pastor. I went to jail and I was able to minister in jail. People were getting saved in jail. They were excited when they saw me come because I could relate to them. I was in um, the mall one day and a gentleman said, that's the greatest preacher I ever heard. And I'm looking around, I'm thinking, you know, well, who's here, Joel? I'm like, okay, who's here? You know, I'm excited about seeing someone. And he said, no, it's you. He said, because you came into jail, you minister the message. I'm no longer on drugs. I have a job and I'm doing well in life. So I said that to say this, I had to go through what I went through, not for myself, but for someone else. Yeah, man, uh, that's a, a, a great testimony. And that testimony will bless continually people who hear it uh, from this point until you leave this earth, you depart this earth. And, and that testimony that's on video when you depart from this earth, somebody is still going to be blessed from that. Because people, let me tell you this, uh, throughout life, we're in a fallen world. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go through some trials and tribulations. Uh, every one of the apostles had trials and tribulations. Uh, Saul mm -hmm. was a man who killed Christians mm -hmm. and thought he was doing it in the name of God. He had a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. Okay, God had to blind him. And uh, just like Pastor Myron said, he was jailed for 60 days. Mm -hmm. Now, you look at this innocent face of Pastor Myron, you wouldn't think that he was jailed for 60 days. But listen, he was and Apostle Paul uh, was a murderer. Well, yeah. he wasn't apostle at the time. So he was a murderer, but God used him yeah. for his good. Yeah. And so that scripture, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord, who are the called according to his purpose. That's only for believers now. Mm -hmm. let, let me say that. That's not for non-believers. All things don't work out for your good, uh, people who are non-Christians. Now, some may say, well, how can you say that? Uh, Christians are not the only ones that are going to heaven. Well, the Bible says opposite of what you just said. Christians are the only ones that are going to heaven because they have repented of their sins, confessed and believed Christ as Savior Lord, and believed that he died on the cross and was resurrected on the third day. They received Christ's free gift of salvation. So, again, that scripture that Pastor mentioned is only for believers. Now, you can become a believer if you choose Christ. And let go of this world. But mm -hmm. anyway, let's get back on topic. Man, I see I get to talking, man. I can talk about the word of God yes. over and over and long time. Uh now, what are you hoping that people will glean uh from your book, Pastor? My prayer is that every because it's spirit filled and anointed, that every person would um 
have a 31 day turnaround. I had this one lady wrote me and she's, she's ordered over a hundred and something books and she takes wow. them and she passes them out to people. But she said this book saved her life when she was going through a hard time in life. She didn't know and she ordered it in this third, I think she's read it like three or four times, but she said this book has saved her life. And I'm not bragging on me. I want to brag on how awesome God is. When you do Amen. what God tells you to do, he anoints you. That's why Jesus said the spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me. God anointed me in this time, in this season, for this book. Man, you know what? Uh, that's a great thing. It's sort of like tracks that people have and they uh, pass them out usually in the downtown area mm -hmm. uh, or the downtrodden areas. Uh, this woman purchased, uh, you said a hundred books? Over a hundred books, yeah. Over a hundred books. Now, Pastor, uh, how much does your book cost? It's $15. $15, people. Now, many of you will pay $100 to see a boxing match between Mikhail, Miguel Cotto and, and Floyd Mayweather. And there's no life in that. Once that's over, it's over. It's in your memory. But this is a book that is strictly based on God's word and it's giving you a format uh, on meditation. And like I stated, it's a 10 to 15 minute read per chapter per day. OK, now, if, if you are a fast reader, it's not about being fast. It's about meditating on it and allowing that word to get in your spirit. OK, that's what it's about. I mean, you can read the Bible, say in all of your reading, get understanding. OK, so just to read it fast. Oh, I read the book. OK, <laughs> what does it say? I, I don't remember. OK, so. Uh, this is a great gift for somebody and also a great gift for yourself. So I encourage you to go out and uh, purchase this book. Uh, so, Pastor, why is it so important to stick to God's formula, which is his word, instead of trying to recreate the will and dibble and dabble in self-help methodologies? Because God's word said it's the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And if you notice, self-help only lasts sometimes for a moment and that's, that's it. But God's word will last forever. And that's the difference in them. Once you get this word down on the, on the inside of your heart, there's nothing that the devil can do to hurt or harm you, no matter how much he brings up on you. You know, look at Job. Job had to have some type of word down in his heart to go through everything that he went through. But yet and still, uh, uh, God gave Job double and Job didn't have the book of Job. We have the book of Job to <laughs> say we can go back and see Job's life. Job couldn't see his life. He had to live this thing by faith. Yes. Yes. Well, it is impossible to please God without what, Pastor? Faith. All right, we got to have faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things, what, Pastor? Not seen. All right, people, faith. Abraham uh, b believed God by faith mm -hmm. and was considered righteous because of his faith. They didn't have uh, Jesus back then. Uh, of course, we got the pre-incarnate Christ, but Christ uh, was not uh, in Abraham's day uh, for Abraham to believe in Christ, but God... Uh, considered Abraham righteous because he believed. He believed. And when yeah. you are a man of God back then and you were willing to sacrifice your son yes. because you knew that God could re resurrect your son, that's faith. Mm -hmm. That's faith. That's faith. Yes, I don't, that I don't know if my faith would be that strong. <laughs> I'm telling you. I don't either. Pastor Myron, where can people go to, to purchase your book? Well, you can purchase it um, on my website, which is www.whatnowdrj.com. That's whatnowdrj.com. Let's get an autographed copy. Or it's on Amazon if you just want to order it on Amazon. Okay, and the title of your book on Amazon would be Moments of Meditation, a 31-day turnaround. Yes, sir. And this is my copy right here. All right. Let me put it up a little closer to the screen right here. Uh, like I said, let me show you guys. You see those yellow highlights? Mm. I highlight what interests me and I want to go back to. I see every situation in my life as a God opportunity. Oh, That's good. All things work together yeah. for the good of them that love the Lord who are the called according 
to, to his purpose. Yes, so if we look at everything that happened in our life, both good and bad, even though people say, well, how can I look at something bad that's good for my life? Well, we we don't understand all of the supernatural things that God does because he says, my ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are higher than your thoughts. As high as the heavens is from the earth. You, you, you can't comprehend everything uh, that God does, but just know as a believer that he has our best interests at heart. Yes. yes. He has our best interests at heart. Uh, I will post a link of uh, Pastor Myers' book, Moments of Meditation, a 31-day turnaround in the description section uh, below this video on my YouTube channel. Uh, again, I purchased the book and read it myself. It's a great read, and it's biblically based and very sound theologically. Uh, folks, it's a great read and very sound theologically. The stuff that this world is giving you out in the streets on television stations, uh, it's garbage and it's leading you uh, astray. Now for Christians who are straddling the fence, you got one foot in the world and one foot in the church, come on back full time to God. Uh, start winning souls, sharing the gospel because your witness is affected when people see you, you're, you're in the world and then you're trying to go to church and then you're trying to tell them mm -hmm. uh, what thus said the Lord. Uh, your 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 uh, testimony is damaged. Yes. Your damaged goods, because they feel like, well, hey, I saw you doing this, yeah. and so uh, and and the Bible says, shun not the appearance of evil, mm -hmm. right? So that means that when people see you in certain settings and you claim to be a Christian, uh, they say, well, you were doing what I was doing. Why should I want to be a Christian? Yes. You're no different from me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's correct, pa Pastor. Uh, are there any final thoughts you'd like to leave with my audience pertaining pertain to your uh, your book, Moments of Meditation, a 30-day turnaround? One of the chapters in there, uh, Rodney says, stay in a positive lane. So if I was to say anything to a person today, I would say, stay in the positive lane. We always have to look at a situation. Find God in that situation because God is in that situation somewhere, whether it's telling you not to do something or whether it's telling you to do something or whatever it may be, God is in there. So stay in a positive lane. When you look at your situation and something that you may be going through, just look at it and say, God, this is a God opportunity. God, you're going to do something in this situation. And then, like you said, keep the faith. Just hold on because I've learned when you go through a tunnel, it's only dark for a moment. You're going to come out of that tunnel. And so even a wow. mountain with um, two, a mountain, uh, uh, a mountain has two tops and then it has a, a hill in the bottom, you know, and the little engine that think, could said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And that's the way, find something that's going to motivate you to continue moving forward because you're coming out. All right. That's profound, man. That's profound. Uh, Pastor Byron, if you don't mind, close us out in prayer. Okay. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this broadcast on today. I thank you for um, Rodney and all he's doing for the kingdom of God. Father, he's shining light in the kingdom. And, Father, I pray for every person out there that's straddling the fence. Father, I pray that they would surrender to you today, give their all to you, and trust you. Father, I thank you even now that um, those that are, are looking for church home will find the church homes, God. And I just thank you and bless you, God, because you're worthy of all the glory, the honor, and praise. And we pray this prayer this day, God. I pray for salvation upon every person that um, watches this broadcast. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, Pastor, uh, give uh, my audience your Facebook uh, name, uh, so they can follow your service that you have on Sundays. Uh, uh, you upload live uh, broadcast on Sunday on Facebook. I've listened to them about three times. And uh, this brother is is a great pastor. He don't have all the, the, the flair that you see a lot of these pastors have that is uh, not feeding you spiritually. But this brother is sound doctrinally. And that's what's most important. You know, we as black folks, a lot of us, we like to be entertained. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not about entertaining. You see what I'm saying? It's a it's a time and a place for everything. Uh, but this brother right here is disseminating the word of God. And uh, give them your Facebook page. And also, if you have a YouTube channel, give them give them that. Uh, 
uh, give them the name of your church so that they can look you up and uh, hear your sermons. And possibly, if, if they're not now, of course, the Bible says forsake not the assembling of uh, ourselves together, as some do. Uh, but if you are in a situation where you can't attend uh, his church in North Carolina and you are not attending a place in your local city, which you should mm -hmm. find a good Bible believing church, then you can watch his broadcast. Give them that information. Amen. So on um, Facebook, I'm Myron Jamerson, and my, my name is at the on the screen. And on Instagram, I think it's what's what's um, what's up, what now? I'm sorry, what now, Doctor J? And then the name of our church is on YouTube as well as on Facebook. It's Rock City Church NC, North Carolina, and that and we're located in Sanford, North Carolina. So it's Rock City Church NC. And uh, folks, I will put up put all that information in the description section below the video. Well, Pastor Myron, I'd like to thank you for coming on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show and blessing my audience with God's word of wisdom that has been incorporated in your book, uh, Moments of Meditation. And I hope to have you back uh, for another show and another topic in the near future. Thank you for this. Let's give Dr. Pastor Myron Jameson a round of applause and thank you for coming on the Straight Butter Dating and Relationship Talk Show. Thanks again, Pastor, for coming. Thank you for having me. God bless you and your ministry. If you've enjoyed the content of this video, please like, share, subscribe, and leave a comment. God bless.